Hello. Um, haven't done this in a while, but decided to do um, a quick video on one of the add-ons that we use uh, at Crash. Um, this is the uh, Ember uh, template component import add-on that Dave wrote. Um, basically what it does is basically rewrite your uh, templates to allow for imports like this of relative imports or absolute imports. Um, this is kind of like a, a stepping stone for the the uh, template imports RFC, which is there's like some low level uh, RFC out there that hasn't been approved, I think yet. But we've been using this for a while now and it works really well. Um, I know I know that um, co-location RFC has or has been pretty much implemented uh, and released I think in 310 or 311 um, but this is st I feel like this is still much better um, and currently we use um, this kind of syntax I think the proposal is to use kind of like an ES uh, imports there's actually an RFC in here to kind of enable that so it would look like something like this um, kind of use this format. Uh, this new format would allow for things like this, uh, importing multiple components from a directory. Um, so let me just, yeah, let me show you what that's like. Um, so let's do a new Ember app. <clears throat> Set that up. <clears throat> Install takes a little while. <clears throat> so this um, this setup kind of requires, <coughs> excuse me, requires um, using pods. I know a lot of people don't use pods, but um, we use pods with lots of success. Um, so let's see here, code. <clears throat> so let's, let's install this add-on. Some more waiting. Develop your life. And so we need kids. Uh, pod module prefix has not been defined. Let's do that and rerun or install. Actually, I don't think I need to reinstall it. I can just run the generator, but it's easy enough. <clears throat> okay, so that worked. Um, let me delete all these directories so we don't need templates, styles, and keep styles, uh, routes. Models can stay, helpers can stay, controllers and components. Um, so new folder, uh, pods, and in here let's do, so we kind of organize, we have like two different organizational structures. We have um, like general purpose UI elements that are in the app, and then more specific ones that live under routes. Uh, so we do something like new folder, apply, and then here we can create we can create a new component like um, you know, 
search call search um, and let's put some text in here save that and let's add a application route which will we won't define the actual route route for the application, we'll just do the template. Um, and we'll import our search component. So y slash search. Save that and do npm start. Let's see what this looks like. I didn't miss anything. <clears throat> there we go. Let's open this up. Oops. Not that window, this window. My search component, there it is. Um, we also follow a different pattern where we um, define components inside of routes. And so when you're in a route, it's kind of hard to Usually we don't just create a folder and put components in it. Or we, we, we started not to do that, not to do that. Uh, in the past. It's kind of hard to distinguish if you're inside of a route or inside of a component, unless, I mean, unless there's a route JS file there. Um, so we started making like a folder in here called dash components. And in here we can do the folder uh, user card or something like that um, and new file template. let's save that and up here we can just do import uh, we'll call it user I'll just call it user uh, just because we can um, so we do dot slash dash components card and we can render that right below and just do a, a break here so we can see those on two different lines and we have user card um, yeah I mean that looks looks great um, and that's really that's the how that works um, it works really well um, for things like add-ons, um, so this this doesn't handle like importing from an add-on. Uh, I guess I could, but I mean, there's not really a because add-ons just merge everything into your app to be accessible. So you can do something like um, if you wanted to use Ember animated container or something like that, you could do import uh, animated container from animated container Oops. and that would work um, just because this is the name of the component that Ember animated exposes for that um, so we'd still do that in our application we do any um, components that we bring in from add-ons uh, we call in this way um, and so, I mean, currently this has helped us like greatly. Um, local components don't really work if you don't import them. I mean, if you forget to import one of these, they just work if you call them the right name as before, um, since they did before. I mean, it's not, it's like a global thing. So, um, but if you want to change it, change the name or whatever, uh, that works really well. And also it's just keeping all your imports, just having everything imported which is very explicit and works really well um, and then one other thing we do is we have an add-on and basically we do something like it's called crash kit and so we do import um, button or let's do a different one input from crash kit slash fields slash input uh, 
and so basically what that add-on does is it re-exports everything inside of a crash kit folder um, so technically there's a crash kit like there's a crash kit directory in app uh, and so that's why this works that way and it, that makes it really nice for us to have like a design system kind of um, or style guide or whatever and be able to import these components that we use in multiple apps um, which is nice and then we usually order this stuff like top like crash kits first or like add-ons is first and crash kit then UI and then relative and so we do like that kind of import structure um, but this is like super powerful because like um, you know like where things are right away and you can just search if you move a directory you can just find whatever's using this like through search uh, using that directory um, and just be able to change that uh, if we had more better tooling or if this was a really part of ember um, then it would be like awesome like these could probably be renamed or something if you move it um, I mean, that's kind of our goal. We're just getting uh, some of this, just trying this out, seeing how it works. And I mean, this is experimental. Um, it's not using any private APIs just because this rewrites it to something like, um, here's an example, rewrites it to something like this. So it just makes it's like a really easy shorthand. Um, and you can also do things like, so search, at user component equals uh, user. So user component, yeah. Um, so that would like that works. You can this is passing this value in there just because this is defined in scope here. Uh, just because after the imports, then you have the let. And then you kind of like nest together, and then everything else is inside of those let blocks. Um, and so you can pass these in, um, or you can do component user, I don't know, profile equals desktop profile, something like that. Um, so yeah, you can extend some of that stuff too. So I mean, this works really well for us. There's also a, a more experimental add on which lets you import styles. So let's see, yeah, there you go. This one, uh, so you have this kind of syntax and you just apply the styles that the classes get translated to a, a style. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is something else to check out. This is even more green uh, than this add-on, but it's the same style and we've been um, trying to fix this up. So this works with SAS. Um, if you can try this out, make sure you install Ember CLI SAS as well. Um, and also depends on pods. So those are kind of the requirements there. Um, yeah, well, thank you for stopping by. And if you have any questions, just leave some comments or uh, find me on Twitter. See ya.